Really no, appreciate, stuff. Yeah, appreciate I'm, it, man. Yeah, like I said, um, what, go on, sorry, go on. No, that was it. I'm just saying excited to be back. Yeah, you know what? Obviously, um, we, we've we had loads of brilliant guests and we always have great comments, um, you know, saying how, how well they've done, um, how they've enjoyed it and things of that nature. But the number one question is always, where's Riz? When's Riz coming back? When's Riz coming back? So um, yeah. it's good to have you back, man. Yeah, Akil, so, how are you doing, bros? All good, man. Just uh, obviously on the back of that, whatever we call it, happened on Monday night. But it is what it is. We've got the three points. We move forward and, yeah, let's beat Spurs. Yeah, yeah, it's, Go it's, yeah it's been a busy week. Um, but it's Friday, weekend's coming. We've got tomorrow's game. Let's get going. And then uh, week at Manchester United. So, you know, like you said, let, let, let's get going. Um, boys, I, obviously, I was listening. You've done a, um, a podcast with Hannah recently as well. Fantastic uh, podcast, Hannah. Thank you very much uh, for coming in. Um, it's quite interesting, actually, um, some of the views that you guys had uh, with Hannah as well. So I, I just want to start with the, the transfer strategy. Um, I think there's nowhere else you can start uh, other than Harry Maguire. And there is. I'm going to put this out to you first because obviously it's been a while since we've heard your views. But we was all in a bit of a um, a flow, I think, before um, the Harry Maguire news. You know, it was kind of Scott McTominay, Harry Maguire, going to be a double sale to West Ham. Then, you know, it was a, a greed fee with Harry Maguire. Um, you know, it all looked like it was going to go through, 30 million. We was on the podcast. Ted was on there. He was crying almost. You know, we had to hold him back. He hasn't been since seen ever since. You know, I think um, <laughs> he's now down with some kind of illness. I think he's, I don't know what he's calling it, but I'm sure it's a Harry Maguire illness. But um, but then he's turned around since as well. The uh, reports are coming out that he doesn't want to go. Yeah. You know, it's a weird one that I think there's no chance he's getting in this Man United team. It's clear that Ten Hag doesn't fancy him. It's clear that his teammates don't fancy him. It's obvious. Um, just look at the body language when the guy plays. I think he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. I think in himself, he wants to play for Man United. And he needs to realise the fact that he's not going to. It's not going to be first choice, second choice, third choice, even fourth choice. He's fifth choice centre-back. Um, going to West Ham, it's a massive step down. Of course it is, right? But then rumours were that he was being offered a captaincy. Um, and I don't think it's I don't think it's him. I think it's West Ham not able to match the fee that United want. I think it's as simple as that. Um, but they agreed the fee, didn't they? 30 million, Man United and West Ham? I'm not sure. I'm mm. not sure. because I, I, Look, if Harry Maguire did not want to go those negotiations wouldn't have opened in my opinion hmm. i don't think they would have they would have commenced those negotiations unless he indicated okay fair enough i'll leave but i think it's simply down to west ham not being able to match the fee if it's not let's assume it's not it's him then the guy needs to take a long hard look at himself in the mirror i'm sorry you know i don't know where ted is i wish he was here right now but the, <laughs> but, but obviously as a professional in any career, uh, that's, one thing, that's one thing. That's one thing for um, Ted always says he's a professional. He's a good professional. Well, he's professional. not being a professional right now, though, is he? If, assuming it's not the fact that West Ham haven't matched the fee, if it is him that's put it in, you know, a uh, spanner in the works, then you just sit back and logically think about it. He's been told he's fifth choice, or, or certainly, let's put it another way, he's not starting, right? There's other centre backs ahead of him, unless there's a drastic injury crisis so you as a professional you know why would you turn down the chance to go and play somewhere week in week out why would you do that so it comes down to one of two things well actually it only really comes down to one thing actually well we, now one of two things his family doesn't want to move south or is not enough money for him he waited he waited to pay off from Man United, which is what all the rumors were saying to, to match his contract until the end of his contract with Man United. And if that's the case, yes, on one hand, you could say that is within his rights, because he is within his rights. There's a legal contract, employment contract in place. But he's not as if he's short of a few bobbies. He's, he's a multi-millionaire. 
right? You've got to have pride and say, listen, I want to play week in, week out. That's what, I, well, that's what I dreamt of growing up as a kid. I've made it big time, played for England in the semifinals of the World Cup, in the finals of the Euros, in the quarterfinals of another World Cup. I've captained Man United. You know, I want to say face and go and play football. For me, that's professional. Doing what he's doing, if it's true, is not professional. So he's not a professional, right? He's within his rights. Don't get me wrong. There's a difference between being within your rights and being professional in your profession. It's not being professional at all. No, I get you. And I think Aki and um, Afsal, you know, with Hannah, kind of echo those same sentiments last week. You know, yeah. you, sh you should be looking to move and things of that nature. For me, I, 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 I honestly, right, I'm not just saying this, but I genuinely think that Phil Jones is a better football player than Harry Maguire. I mean, even Johnny Evans, I'd say. Johnny Evans is better. Yeah. I think that's why um, I think Riz is saying he'd be fifth choice behind even Johnny Evans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I mean, if I was Everton Hag, what I would do is I would literally just demote him to the reserves um, and just say, look, you know what, just get a new club because otherwise you're going to stay not in the first team, but in the reserves because I don't want you to play. You're not going to be, you're not going to be starting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a bit of a, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be Ted for a, a moment. Um, I'm going to try to be anyway. I don't think I can be as good as him, but, um, you're missing uh, him, aren't you? you're missing him. Uh, <laughs> big shoes. Um, well, what I will say is two things, really. Firstly, if I'm Harry Maguire, and I'm I'm at Manchester United, and I look. At, I'm not a big defender of Harry Maguire. I, I like the uh, you know he's a good player. He's not Manchester United level, so he needs to go somewhere where he's going to find his level, where it would be at West Ham. Now, however, the way he probably feels, the way he's been treated by a the fans, maybe by the club. Um, you know, maybe he feels not always been backed by the club. You know, he's probably I think his um, contract ends in is it. 2025, maybe with an extra year to extend in 26. I think he's got at yeah. least a, two years on there. Yeah, he's, he's got, got two years. He's got two years. So he's thinking, well, hang on, you know what? Like you said, Reese, he's going to go to a club which is far less than him. Now, yes, he's not always going to play week in, week out, but he's at Manchester United. I don't think you can ever overlook that. Just like we mentioned about the Glazers being so stubborn about selling the club. But that's the only thing they've really got is Manchester United. As soon as they mention we're the owners of Manchester United, there comes credibility. There comes certain, um, you know, respect. Um, yeah, respect. You know, Shorat, as they always say, you know what I mean, um, with it. Now, I'm going to say that's the, similar to him as well. And the other side of things as well, I was talking to um, a tax advisor friend of mine um, who was talking about um, Aston Villa, a player from Aston Villa a few years back. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to name names, but he was um, he was a player there who was playing for them in uh, uh, Aston Villa when they were in the Premier League. Now, I think things that we don't always think about that we forget uh, uh, as normal human beings. This person had taken out mortgage, but the mortgage he had taken out was obviously on his Premier League wage. You know, it was a big it was a big mortgage. Obviously, we know these players don't buy the houses out, right? They use mortgage, they use, you know, still use loans and things of like that, etc. But when he then got um, uh, you know, he he was actually advised not to do it on his mortgage, on his um wages that he was on. They said, Look, you can afford it, but you just don't know what's gonna happen. He's like, No, 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 I'm I'm gonna buy this house on this mortgage, this, that, the other. Okay, he done it. And then the following season they get relegated. And I think they lost about forty percent wage reduction so that 40 percent right. is a massive thing so on his mortgage he couldn't basically keep up his mortgage so he had to default and like we says you're right these guys are multi-millionaires but as we know what we've seen it very often as well there are our own ex-players who get bankrupt because they just don't know how to utilize money now obviously i can't talk about harry Maguire, and i don't know his personal life but I think that's sometimes what we overlook is that they've got big spend, big expenses as well. You know, he's probably bought something. You know, he was the captain of Man United. He's probably thinking, well, I've got a three-year contract, four-year contract. I'm not going anywhere. So I can buy X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to, you know, get the loans out, get the mortgage out. Now, as you say, if he goes to West Ham, from what I believe, we've agreed a £30 million fee with West Ham. 
but there's a shortfall. I think you guys mentioned it occurred enough so in the last um, podcast as well. There's either about a seven million or a fifteen million um, deficit on what is old. There's one or the other. I don't know. Yeah, one. any yeah. anywhere between. I mean, some reports said seven is what is remaining. Someone said he's demanding ten to fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. You know, um, so I would so take that as sort of using, you know, the the optional extra year. And yeah, he's factoring that, that into the fifteen million. Yeah. Which look, if someone said to you, "Go and work somewhere else, do the exact same job for half the money," ninety percent of people would say no. So. Again, like Riz said, he's well within his rights there. But for me, and I'm going to go back to the thing that Ted always says about Harry Maguire being a top professional and all this. This is going to impact his England career. Because Levi Cole will, will steam ahead of him and Levi Cole will, will be at the Euros and Harry Maguire won't. No, I, I get that. But the way I look at nah, it, if I was him, I'd, 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 I would... He's got naked pictures of Gareth Sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's got something, doesn't he? Speak. Yeah. I, I, I think... Uh, what, is, I think um, the Euros next year, he won't make it to the World Cup. So the Euros is his last final... Um, He's, his final tournament with England. So he's probably thinking, well, like you just said, he's got naked pictures of Gareth Southgate. So I'm kind of a shoe in for, for that, for that, um, you know, that squad. You know, even at Man United, even if he stays, he probably will play some games. Yes, he won't play near enough as he will at West Ham, but he might still get enough to get him into the squad. You know, so the way I think, you know, and the next thing I want to move on to is the, is the strategy. And ask you boys your thoughts on this as well. Now, I would also put this on Manchester United. Now, like I said, if I'm Harry Maguire, I, I'm with him. I understand where he's coming from here. But isn't this a a fallout of the people either who were, were running the club who are still running the club and their strategy and the what they're doing and the way they're dealing with this? Now, if they want him off the books, if they want someone, pay them that pay. You're going to have to take a hit. Yeah. You know, if it is the wages you want to get him off or, you know, you, you want the transfer fee, now, you know, either utilise him and just keep him in the squad, say, right, you utilise him. Or, like you said, um, Riz, there's no, you know, you don't agree with a, with a club without knowing that player wants to come. So, you know, Man United have no doubt had conversations with Harry Maguire and things like that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. What, is, what, what it is, though, maybe they haven't come to that mutual term, termination clause yet, that mutual fee that they want to pay out. Maybe Maguire wants the 15, but United are coming to just a six or whatever, and they're trying to get that mutual one there. Um, and they haven't reached it, and that's why it's fallen through, maybe. Um, but again, I go back to what I said before. If I was to Everton Hag, I'd literally just do more to the reserves, let him rot there. Yeah, I mean, like I said, he's he's a good enough defender. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, Carabao Cup games. I don't think know. he's good enough for the reserves either. <laughs> I'm just being brutally honest. I just, I just look. We need a touch today. He is, he is a sound human being. So I don't want to be seen as slamming the guy. I just think he's an atrocious football player. Atrocious. Yeah, I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't think he's Man United quality. Um, but you know what? For, even for England, he always does does well. And now I'm not that's saying that says a lot about England. I'll tell you why. Because they play with two other centre backs to support him and support, two yeah. defensive midfielders to support him as well, man. Yeah, yeah, he, he, my grandma could do that, and she's been yeah. dead twenty minutes. <laughs> he, he does. He does need a lot of support. But I, I, I don't want to make it the Harry Maguire show, not at all, man. I, I think, like I said, uh, you know, we, we we know what's happening here. But on the back of the Harry Maguire, he, he's getting a lot of flack, you know, because people now are saying we're going to miss out on Sofin Amrabat, we're going to miss out on um, Benjamin Pavard. Uh, you know, we're looking at the players, but they're not going to come in. We've only got two weeks left. What are your boys, uh, you know, thought of the overall strategy, uh, you know, of, of the transfers and things of that nature, the, the way things have gone so far and what's been happening? I, I think incoming-wise, we've been all right um, because we've managed to negotiate some good fees, apart from the Highland one, which is about 72 million. But I think it's the player sales that basically we are struggling on. And I think what you said uh, a few episodes back as well, Harps, was our United selling club. 
are we actually when it comes to players and what we want to actually get rid of them and stuff? We no, can't look, sell for shit. We can't sell anything. No. We, we, we're really yeah. bad at that. And do you know why that is? That's because we give our players galactical salaries. An average yep. player, you, you, you know, Brandon Williams is on eighty grand a week. I think sixty or eighty grand a week. Yeah, he's on a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's what Declan Rice was on at West Ham, wasn't he? Even less than that. Okay. Yeah, less yeah, than that. Like wow. That. You're right. Um, and again, Harry Maguire being the, the case in point, why can't we get rid of him? Because of the wages he's on, you know. But I, I do think Man United now have to change. A lot of the, I have said it before. A lot of what's happened, and we're going to suffer from it because of Ed Woodward, because of the contracts he'd, he'd given out. You know, uh, again, Harry Maguire, Brandon Williams, all these kind of contracts were given under Ed Woodward, and now we're suffering for it. Ten Hag does not want them. He wants them gone. But nobody will, pay, you know, nobody will take them, or we've got to lose out. So, you know, if we're going to pay half of the wage, the pro- the club's probably thinking, well, might as well just keep them then, you know, because we're going to have to go and buy somebody, pay their fee, and pay their wage as well. And we're paying, you know, Brandon Williams or Harry Maguire's half of the fee. So, for that amount, we might as well just keep him. Yeah. You know, but I, I think I want. Uh, I want to pick up something what Absal said on, on the last podcast as well. Um, Brighton. I think he's quite complimentary about Brighton. I love their business model. I think it's absolutely amazing. You know, they. I said this off air just now. They they took, what, 11 staff from... Well, sorry, Chelsea took 11 staff from Brighton. That's Graham Potter, all his coaching staff, and obviously Cucurella, Caicedo now as well. Eventually that got done. Newcastle took the director of football and I don't know about you guys, but when that happened at the start of last season, well, barring Caicedo, I was like, this is it. They're, they're going to collapse. Like this, They can't sustain this. And they have gone from strength to strength. And I just think, wow, like the setup that Tony Bloom has got must be that good. That De Zerbe is a world-class manager by the looks of things. Um, pretty cold dude as well. Like they asked yeah, him about this, this season will tell a lot. I've already what, what, forgotten about him. Yeah, this season will tell a lot about him, won't it? Uh, De Zerbe, what he's like. But mm. it's... You know what? I hand, you know, applaud it to Brighton, man. They've smashed it. No, I, that's what I want to pick you up on. I, I know you said... Um, yeah, well, I, I'm paraphrasing here now. I think you were saying whoever, um, whatever midfielder Brighton are going, let's go and grab him. Pay that five, <laughs> ten million pound extra. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the question I, I've got, uh, Ariz, uh, it'd be quite interesting to hear your point because I know you was a big Kai Saido fan. I know you didn't want him for the middle, but you were saying as an inverted right back, which, which yeah. is probably a good shout, really. And I think we talked about before, hundred. what was it? What is it now? 115? 10 million was it? He's gone for yeah, yeah, yeah. 115. Yeah. yeah, which I think we can all agree upon that. You know, I don't think that's the kind of money we would have wanted to pay for somebody like him. Now, yeah. the only thing I would say for somebody like Brighton, two things really it suits Brighton. Now, what they do, like I says, they've got no expectations, they haven't got the pressure of a Manchester United. The other thing I'd like to look at, obviously, like Tony Bloom since he's been here and in the Premier League, I suppose, and when they've sold the players, what player has gone on and accelerated even more as they've gone? I was yeah, just no. going to come to this because Nobody. they've all flopped. You know, um, like you said, Riz, I mean, what you, would you want us to kind of go with that kind of model? You, you know, what... Do you think that's the kind of thing we should do? We should be should we be unearthing these little gems? Should we go on with yeah. a bit more proven? You know what? I think I think we need to do a combination of both at Man United, right? We've always done the, a combination of both. If you think of under Fergie, you know, back then, inflation, economy, all of that, transfer fees, we went out and we spent, don't forget. Was it 2021 20, or million or something like that on Rude Van Nistroy back in the day? 19 yeah. million. Well, yeah. I remember that figure for some reason. And then we did the same for, not the same figure, but similar figure, a period before that for Yap Stam, then a period, and then Rio Ferdinand. Andy, Andy Cole, I always remember 7 million. I always remember I was on a school bus and I saw 7 million. I thought, what, 7 million? Yeah. 
So, so my point is, we've always gone and bought proven players and mixed them in with our youth. And I think our youth is coming through very well. Now, if you think about the players that have come through, Garnacho, if he continues to be moulded right, it's going to be a world beater. The other one, Mason Greenwood. Forget everything that's going on with him, but he's a gem that's from a pure football perspective that we unearthed, we moulded, we brought through our academy. We've got Mainu. We've got Hannibal. We've got Juado and Fernandez, right? The two wing backs. Albeit we bought them from Barca and Real Academy, respectively. But we are bringing through, and we had Kovar, who we've just sold on, right? He was a brilliant goalkeeper. A bit gutted we sold him on, but there you go. We've got, we do unearth the players. I personally think Mainu is going to be a brilliant, brilliant player. I think as a midfielder, he's got more strings to his bow than Caicedo has. Yeah, I personally do. Caicedo's had one season in the Premier League, right, where everyone went la-la over him. Don't we forget, had... Riz, he also, when he came there, he yeah. wasn't seen for about a year. That's my point, yeah. That's the, when we were about to sign him. Mm. We had a chance to sign him, like, for five million quid, man. And um, so the point I'm making really is, is why I wanted him was for that inverted right-back role, like you mentioned before. And I think if you go back to the Wolves game last week, or earlier on this week, that's where we kept falling down, in my opinion, because both our full-backs tried to invert, couldn't do what the best inverted wing-backs do. They can't make that system work. I think someone like a Kaiser. I actually think in wing-backs, if you think about what Pep's doing with Guardio that he's just bought, he's playing left-back, but he's going to invert into that inverted right-back, left-back role, and he's going to basically control the midfield from there. That's what the skills we want. It's not a traditional right back skills that bomb up the pitch. That's where I felt Casado was would have would have massively taken us on another level in that particular position. In the midfield position, I think if we can complete the deal for Amrabat, and then when Manu comes back from his injury, and when Hodgland starts playing, I think we'll start ticking. It's just we need to get that Amrabat through. I still feel because. If we don't, we'll have a long, hard season ahead of us, in my opinion. Yeah, I think there's still some signings that need to be done. I, I agree. Um, Amrabat, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I've said it before. I've not really seen Amrabat. I can't comment. I, I saw him in the World Cup. You know, he done well. Um, I do like Adma, uh, Amada uh, Anana and other guys on here don't like him. Um, I think they shared the same no, I, I love him. I, I, really like him. Like him. I think the last, last that... podcast, they, they, it went for them too. Is that the, really. the Everton one? Everton one. The Everton one, yeah. yeah. I'm a dad, do yeah. I? Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. You know, obviously, don't forget, he's 21. Yeah. Uh, he's, so he's quite young. He held his own first year in the Premier League. You know, he was uh, shed and, uh, head and shoulders above any of the uh, Everton players. Uh, Guys, he's better than Lu he's better than Lavia. Let's put it that way. Yeah, miles ahead of him. Miles ahead of Lavia. You know, uh, and he's and he's got that engine. He's got the legs that can you know up and down as well. Yeah, go on. So I was thinking you're going to say something. You're going to back your corner. No, I was just going to say my <laughs> ideal um, midfield would have been Lavia and Caicedo coming in, but we know where they both ended up. So, <laughs> so it's a pipe dream that'll never be realised. I, I look honestly, objectively, if you had to pick just one player, just one, Lavia or Mainu, who would you pick? Mainu. Then I then I pick Mainu. That's my yeah. point. So yeah. We wouldn't have had yeah. both, and we could have had one. Yeah. I think and and I think that he's, he's the one everybody keeps forgetting. And now there's a, it annoys me, it pisses me off, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to lie to you. Like you just said, people want the likes of Lavia um, and other players as well. I don't think, yo, we've got our own man who, yeah, but he's untested. We don't know this. I'm thinking, you want another youngster? Okay, he played a year. But this guy, obviously, Eddie Ten Hag, given a brand new contract, was playing him throughout the whole preseason. Yeah, yeah. We could all see. Why can't we just back our own players, man? This again, I said. You know, my new. Last if, if, you not see him if, own Arsenal's midfield. You know, my new. If you, if my new wasn't injured, I think he would have started against Wolverhampton. Kobe yeah, my new would have been started. started. Yeah. Yeah, he would have been playing. He would have started. And I've had a few of these conversations with the lads. Like, nah, he's not ready. He can't be doing that. He's ready. He's but, more than ready. Is 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 too? If I, I've read I've read articles about I forget the name of the guy now a youth team manager, 
Um, Nick Cox. That yeah. no, uh, Rene Molestine, whatever it's called. Not no, no, he's previously. No, no, no. no, no, no. Was, Nick, Cox. Like, Nick Cox. Yeah, that. Yeah. He was saying he's too good for the kids. He's too good for the reserves. He's that bloody good. And I don't think and, and people forget. You know, last season he would have been playing. He was yeah. injured. Yeah. People forget he was injured in the last uh, season, man. Uh, and the thing always, oh, he's always... Not, he's, not, he's not one of those injury-prone ones, is he? Hopefully no, not. No, I really, no, no, no. No, again, I'll blame Casemiro for this one, though. The shit challenge that he done. I can't remember. I think he was on Rodrigo from the back, swiped in, and then Rodrigo just fell straight onto Kobe and just done his ankle. Like, do you know what I mean? So it wasn't one where, by, like, a muscle or anything like that. Um, it was actually an impact injury. Um yeah. But yeah, like I said, the thing that always sticks in my head is Manchester United, after five years, won a cup, um, a League Cup in February against Newcastle. Everybody's going crazy. We're seeing the world celebrations of um, where, where goes, you know, big pressure, just relieved off um, Eric Ten Hag's um, shoulders. What's one of the first things he goes and does? Goes and speaks to Kobe Mainu. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know what was said, um, the, you know, whatever. He, but he's so poor, and he missed out all the other players around him. Went straight to Kobe and he was speaking to him. And you could say, you know, he was doing hand gestures, and even Kobe was taking it all in. Yeah, I remember that. that. Do you remember that? And that is this, you know, the highest dean that Eddie Tenag holds him in. Now it's all great saying we need two more midfielders, but don't forget he's going to come back soon. And when he comes back, like you just said, Breeze, I 100% agree with you. Once he comes back, he's going to hold his own. And I think people are sleeping yeah. on him, man. You know we mean? just need one more. We need Amrabat. I'll tell you Amrabat, what, I've, I've, yeah. seen, a, I've yeah. seen a bit of him, right? Yeah. He's brilliant, mate. He, he, like, right. This, the way to describe him, he is, first and foremost, a phenomenally hard worker. He's not one of those lazy lot. He gets about, right? Every blade of grass he covers. Secondly, he's tactically immense. Doesn't give the ball away. Does not give the ball away, right? Progresses it. Not sideways and backwards passes to retain the ball. Forward passes too. The other thing is, he's equally as good as a number six as he is a number eight, right? So he's like signing two players, right? So if you've got number eight out, you can step in there. You've got six out, you can step in there. So I can actually see him transforming, literally transforming us um, if he comes in. And when Mainu comes back, the dynamism and all of that that he brings with him whenever he's on the pitch... We're good in that middle department. We just need that one um, player. And I've been saying the one thing I'm worried about, I've been saying this all summer, uh, maybe not as loudly as, as I've been thinking it, but we need a significantly better right back. I think I think Aaron Bissaka is better than Delo, in my opinion, but I think neither is good enough. I think that's our weak point. I think our Achilles heel is right back. Yeah, you know what? I somewhat agree with that. I, I agree with you. I, I remember Saka is better. No, I don't somewhat agree. I do agree with you. I think we need better right backs. Uh, I don't think we've got the same equivalent of Luke Shaw on the right hand side. Okay. Um, yeah, left but, side, him and Malafia. That's yeah. a good back up. You know what uh, it is, though, that Harps? Just one thing. You know what it is? That's why I personally was so excited when, I was, when the Pavard links were there. Because he's yeah. a right back, he's, he could, I know he wants to play right centre back. That's what he can also play there, but he's a right back and he can and, and he can invert and control the game. And um, that one's gone quiet now as well. <laughs> Good old Adam McGuire, because I think I believe it, um, Inter put in a Inter bit. Inter Milan, yeah. yeah. They've got um, what's he called? Dumfries. Yeah, they've got Dumfries. Does that mean Dumfries? I, I, I think no, he's going to no, play centre back. I don't, I don't rate Dumfries, you know. I don't, rate Dumfries, I don't really like Dumfries either. Yeah. I know a lot of people Even don't. Pavard, I don't, rate, yeah. I don't rate Pavard as well. I'm on the I mean, fence with Dumfries. Yeah, what? like I said. I, 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 <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, with Pavard, I agree he's not probably the best options out there, but he's significantly mm. levels above the two options we do have there. That's the only thing I'd say on that. It's just interesting because I do think we need a right centre back um, to cover for Rafa Varane because he's not going to be fit um, for the majority of the season. I, um, I think he's going to be there for a little bit there. Um, 
Riz, I don't know whether you can hear our record, sorry, bud. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, Rafa Run won't be fit, so I think we need um, a new a new centre-back to help out there as well. No, but I, again, I, on, on the whole, I am going to say, you know, the, the strategy, the football strategy has come along a lot better than what it has done over the last couple of years. Uh, I do think these last couple of weeks, again, I do blame... Ed Woodward, and I think that's why the likes of Harry Maguire aren't leaving. We find it difficult to shift the likes of Eric Bailly as well, because I just think they're on um, money that they're just not getting elsewhere, and they are, and they're refusing to go. Like I said, so that's my thought. I think um, you know they've been decent on the the transfers and, and the football side. What I do not think they've been good at, and they've been absolutely terrible at is the recent news that we had out um, a couple of days ago, I think on the um, Wednesday, the 16th of August. Man United uh, dropped a statement in regards to Mason Greenwood, um, you know, and their perspective. And guys, what I just want to do, I just want to just read it out, just for anybody who may have not heard it. Um, so, you know, I just want to read it out word for word from the, the club, um, and, you know, uh, and let's discuss this because I think it does need to be discussed. You know, there's a lot of conversation going on about this. So, yeah. So what the actual statement says, it says, following the dropping of all charges against Mason Greenwood in February 2023, Manchester United has conducted a thorough investigation into the allegations made against him. This has drawn on extensive evidence and context not in the public domain. And we have heard from numerous people with direct involvement or knowledge of the case. Throughout this process, the welfare and the perspective of the alleged victim has been central to the club's inquiries. And we respect her right to a lifelong anonymity. So we're just getting our words out. We also have responsibilities to Mason as an employee, as a young person who has been with the club since the age of seven, and as a new father with a partner. The fact-finding phase of our investigation is now complete and we are in the final stages of making a decision on Mason's future. Contrary to the media speculation, that decision has not yet been made and is currently the subject of intensive internal deliberation. Responsibility ultimately rests with the Chief Executive Officer. Once made, the decision will be communicated and explained to the club's internal and external stakeholders. This has been a difficult case for everyone associated with Manchester United, and we understand the wrong. Sorry, we and we understand the strong opinions it has provoked based on the partial evidence in the public domain. We ask for patience as we work through the final stages of this carefully considered process. Now that's the official statement from Manchester United about Mason Greenwood and his situation. Thoughts. Yeah. I think it's stupid. Makes no sense. Why would you make a statement about a statement that's coming in the future? Just make the damn statement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I think it's dragged on for too long. And because we're in the world of social media, everyone's reacting to it. Um, and that's all you'll get, reaction. Now, if you look at, if there was no internet and we were basically back in the 80s or whatever, and we were literally picking up newspapers, I think that's when you'd be like, wait for the newspaper, more newspaper or the club to even drop a statement. I think that's one of those things. But now we've got like journalists, the internet, social media. It's... I don't think that would even um, happen. Okay, I don't think it, this case would even been um, brought to the fore if we didn't have social media. Because again... Yeah. Because the things that you hear was that she, Harriet, um, his girlfriend wanted to get revenge back on him because she thought he was cheating on her. Yeah, and then but she, he, but the thing is, though, he did cheat on her. Though that's the thing in in, in England, Judy. I don't think he cheated on her. Was it was him and um, what's his name? Him and Foden, Foden when they went yeah. out. Yeah, they yeah. just called some girls back, and I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, and, um, he, you know, he thought about cheating on her. He 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 basically. I think like there's a video, isn't there, as well, being recorded? Mm. Yeah. When they're in the room or something, but nothing mm. actually ever happened, did it? I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. Like you said, yeah, we don't. But anyway, that was what she was doing, trying to get revenge on him. And I think she then leaked it out 
Because it's a bit weird, isn't it? Like, I don't know. The it's... thing is, though, the thing is, why would she leak it out? From what I, from what I gather was, um, she got hacked and it got leaked out. So why would she actually leak out? Because eventually, they got back together, they've got a kid together. Um, she's the main person, from what I've heard, is who hasn't given this new evidence that she's basically brought forward as well. She's not even put down a statement. Now, the, the one thing that I want to say is, the case has been dropped. Yeah, fair enough. Now, the evidence that got shown in the public domain, the one that's not been in the public domain from the statement that's been said, there has to be that has to be that much powerful for what's in the public domain for for the actual case to be dropped down. This is what one one thing that people don't understand. You're right, and and you know what? I, like I said, my thoughts on this is the public. Neither are they wrong for wanting him to stay and play for the no, club. No, 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 they're not. They're not and they're not. neither are the ones who want to get rid of him are yeah. wrong. They are well within their rights. I think every opinion is correct. Yeah. However, and this is where I go back to Manchester United. It says on the second paragraph of their um, statement, which I'll repeat again, this has drawn on an extensive evidence and context not in the public domain. Yeah. That should be given to us now I, I know some people are saying that you shouldn't uh you should keep it private okay i get that but then you are going to get this backlash and now i think uh because he is a public figure he is playing for manchester united he's a prestigious at a prestigious club we should have that context if not the context we should hear from both the club and especially from um mason greenwood and his girlfriend or his fiance whichever one it is yeah i fully agree i mean the thing is, for them to keep referring to stuff that's not in the public domain, well then, why don't you do the public a favour and give them some transparency? Now, I know there is, well, there's reported plans for Richard Arnold to come out and do an interview. Um, I'm guessing he'd probably just be sat in a room and just talk about it, give a statement or whatever. Is that when we get this transparency? Who knows? And with Man United... They might not even give that transparency. They might just say, oh, yeah, he's back. Oh, yeah, but um, it's to do with things that only we know and that no one else knows. And then it just kicks the ball even further down the road. And like we said from the beginning, the whole thing's been handled wrong from the get-go. It has been abundantly clear for, what, months that they were bringing him back? So if you're going to bring him back, grow a pair of balls, make Drop the it. decision... Make it official and say it with chest and face the backlash. Don't pussyfoot around it. The Athletic was saying it was going to be on the 4th of August. The decision was going to come out. Yeah, and then it got staying. pushed and then it got pushed again. And it just keeps getting pushed. You just think, just clearly, the decision has been made. Or I don't know, you know, when United sometimes do them things where they leak things to the press just to sort of get a reaction and then they sort of decide on the back of that. Like, I remember, was it... Who was that striker we went to sign last year? Weghorst. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, before uh, him, before him. Felix. Oh, uh, and... Uh, 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 yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. They leaked that to the press, and obviously then there was the whole thing about, oh, he said this in his past, he's made some sort of... I, I could be wrong, I think they were anti-Semitic. Yeah. You know, references and stuff. And then, obviously the focus shifted to Waggy. So it could be something we don't know. And the thing is, we can only go off what the press is saying and the press is saying he's going to be back. So it's... Uh, I get that. Look, look, just it's front not... up and say it. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Look, the, the obviously January 2022, he got charged. Okay, yes, he did get charged. So people out there who said he hasn't got charged, he got charged. You know, and obviously then the case was, obviously this is simplifying it, then the case got dropped in November last year, 2022. So in January, um, sorry, January 2022 got done. Um, and then was it in January, um, so November, sorry, February then this year, my apologies, it got dropped and the charge did. Then it's taken another six months for Manchester United to do their own internal investigations. Now, what, what investigations are they doing above and beyond what the court uh, or the police have already done? They would be, they would have that um, evidence, surely. 
Hobbs, the thing is, though, this investigation that United are doing, though, is, if, if you look at the names that are involved in it as well, it's literally bankers that are doing it. Um, and Is that meant to be with the W or with the B? Both. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what it is, look, you've got Richard Arnold, you've got Colette Roach, you've got Patrick Stewart. They're not the people that have that background for these investigations. They're not in private investigators, do you know what I mean? It's the wrong people in the wrong field that they're doing, and they have to pick out. Basically, what I'm saying is the whole board is literally just fucked. You know what I mean? Like they've got the wrong people in, in, in the wrong places, and this yeah. is where the whole club is just it's in basically shambles. Uh, it I, feels I, to me... Sorry, Hobbs. It just feels to me like they're treating it as a... You know, if you work in an office and it's a HR case, kind of feels like that, like, oh, we need to write down and take some statements and we need to have a scribe and, okay, you go back to work now and next person come in and you go back. And like, This isn't that kind of situation. This is highly sensitive. And whatever you decide one way or the other, it's going to have a massive backlash and it just yeah. shows the incompetency, the failures, the just... Yeah. No, I, yeah, I think I think Riz, I think you might want to touch upon this because I know you, some people have mentioned it. Um, I think the reason why it was left yeah. so long, maybe they were looking for the new owners to make the decision. I think they still are. I, I, all right. So here's the thing: we've got. I think the club has. I think the ownership, the leadership of the club, not talking about the Glazers right now, are so scarred because of the Glazers, that they're shit scared to make a decision. And they just sweep it under the carpet or they put a statement out there that, you know, we're completing process. They're trying to delay the decision. They're trying to delay um, as much as possible to camouflage it with the news when Qatar buyers, because it will drown out that news. Everyone I will think be on that's what it, you, know, you know what it is, though? You know, the brush under the carpet, that's been the Glazers' rain, though. A lot of these situations have been brushed under the carpet by the Glazers and uh, yeah. the, the, the the United owners. And I think it's like, how much are you going to brush in that same room? At least just brush it all up, sweep it up, in it, and move on to the next, the next room. Just get on with it. Yeah, I think that, that, that carpet has now become a, a table, how much stuff's underneath it, how high it's yeah. gone. All they need to buy a much... Dyson Hoover, mate, and just sweep it all up. <laughs> uh, you know, back no, in... no, they but... need a Henry. <laughs> um, I, I mean, just moving on uh, slightly there as well. There was a news, uh, I think, was it on the weekend? Uh, I wasn't too far away from the place, actually. Um, I was in um, Greece recently. Um, but there is a place in Turkey called Dalaman. Yeah. Um, but I think there was another Dalaman, Dalaman. Yeah, um, who, who came out with some interesting words. I think he was being interviewed by the BBC. Um, and you know, he, he mentioned a figure about his selling his own club Cardiff and he was talking about uh, our club. Now, the thing is, as, as I said to you earlier, at the, at the top of the the top of the, the show, there we've got the main striker here who's uh, who scored a hat trick in, in terms of this. There's a figure that he mentioned 7.3 billion pounds. Yep. And I seem to remember Riz um, yourself talking about seven point three billion. Aki mentioned it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mentioned it as well. I mean, yeah, everyone. So, uh, everyone, everyone all, can... was... Go on, Riz. Go on, Aki. Go on, Aki. Go on, so, so it's just the it's just the midfielder and the striker here now trying to compliment yeah. each other. Who's going to tell you? So you know, everyone everyone kept saying no, it's in dollars, but it's for me it's in pounds, and that's the way you got to see it. Now that's not. For me, that's not going to be the final figures. I think it'll, it'll rise a bit more. Um, but yeah, 7.3. And I think obviously Dalmatian said it as well from Cardiff, the managing director. 7.2, he says 7.3. So, yeah. Dalmatian. <laughs> Dalmatian. <laughs> you know I just clocked that. You know what? Um, yeah, 7.3. I remember what, what I was told months ago now was that the Glazers have been given more money than they asked for, plus some, right? And that the figures that the journalists are reporting, they're confusing at the beginning of them, incorrectly, the currency symbol. It's never been dollars, it's always been pounds. 
Mm. I, I think I think people be mentioning dollars because that's usually the world currency, isn't it? But you're right in terms of the figures that they want. It's it's in the pounds, isn't it? There. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Riz, because uh, like I said, it's been a while since you've been here, and, and like uh, again, there's a lot of people who still now believe that this isn't going to go through. Um, you know, there's been recent reports as well that, you know, a Qatar deal is dead. Uh, I've just been reading here now that um, text messages being sent. Um, wh what are your thoughts? Where uh, you, You've said this before. If you can just repeat, just on, yeah. on a whole, you know, where we are and why we are, and especially with the 7.3 billion figure as well. My view has always been, and I've always said this, not view, what I've always told is that the date of an announcement is something that just will not been revealed, right? I do not know that. I was taking a guess, right? What I have been told, and I think a lot of people, they're DMing me as well and confusing it, and I just want to clarify it. What I was told is it will not be done before September. Remember, I think it was on episode three or four of, of Harami. I, I mentioned that. Yeah, it's not going to be before September. Now, people are taking that to say, Oh, Riz is saying it's going to be in September. I'm not saying it's going to be an announcement. First September. of September, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying it's not they're going to be before September. And there is logic behind that, isn't there? Yeah. The logic was... Two, two, well, this, the main reason was that HBJ, the father, didn't want to announce stuff without everything being 100% clear. Because once you announce something and it takes time, it then starts to people and media to slam Qatar. Oh, look, they're delaying this, they're delaying that. If the fitness test failed, which can happen, Newcastle failed, I believe, once, if not twice, I believe. Mm -hmm. They had a director on there from being, that was affiliated with being sports, so they failed. The, 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 there was yeah. a director or something with the PIF. Yeah, or, uh, uh, or the Saudi government, should I say? Sorry, and then the B in sports was the second one in terms of because with Qatar, who's it's Qatar's they were pirating it. Yeah, so they're pirating the, point, the Premier League. Um, yeah, so the point the point I, I was making is it fails, people fail, but that amount of slander Qatar would have got from that would have been like through the roof. Ten so they don't wanna, they don't, Man United, yeah, yeah. So, so one they didn't want to announce something and get slaughtered until everything's dotted, right? Second thing, when you do announce that you're going through an acquisition, there is a temporary ban until the deal is complete. If you overtly go and put a statement out there that we are in the process of selling my United or someone says we're in the process of buying my United and the other party concurs to that, there is a temporary transfer ban of players coming in and players going out of your club. As a result of that, if that temporary uh, that ban is there, until the transaction is 100% completed. If something gets in the way, another piece of paperwork that gets in the way, because things I keep saying that should have taken a day have taken a week, things that should have taken a week have taken a month. If something took a bit longer, it would have killed our transfer window, right? So they're the two predominant reasons why before the transfer window's closed, there's not gonna be an announcement. Not that it's gonna be in September, it's just not gonna be before September. Yeah, and I think we, we discuss, um, discussed this uh, slightly on one of the other podcasts that we did on Harami as well, that HBJ is just a thorough person. There's the, the yeah. basically no flies on the guy. He, the people that he mixes with, like I says, I'm always going to mention Larry Fink. There is nobody bigger than Larry Fink um, in the world of finance and things like that. BlackRock CEO, yeah. if people don't know him, and they are very good friends. Uh, when you're in those circles, and I think Aki, I think you, you know, the things that have happened recently yeah. as well, the club. <laughs> I mean, people were saying because uh, obviously when I dropped that Larry Fink one as well, um, they were saying, "Oh, he's close to the Glazers," but then again, he's close to HBJ as well. But then you've got Dalman. He's not close to the Glazers the way. Yeah. The way, but then you've yeah. got Dalman as well, uh, who's basically close to the Glazers, but he literally just spoke about the sale of the club. Do you know what I mean? So, trying to make it make sense in, like, what it is, people just react to basically what Miller Curse and all these students are coming out with, and they're not looking at the two most important, which I keep saying, Bloomberg, and you like, if you don't want to believe us, that's fine, but look at Bloomberg and Reuters. Reuters, yeah, Bloomberg. You know, so, 
Okay, you know, just got a bit of bad reception there. Sorry. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, just go on, just just to add on to that. I don't give a flying fuck if no one believes what I say. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Right? I know. That's not my objective. But point the point I'm making is if people are all of a sudden believing your Ben Jacobs, your sports journalists, right? Then it just shows me that if if that's what's gonna get you upset and and, and unable to sleep. Yeah. Then God help you, man, because they're yeah, not the yeah, journals yeah. that know about this. This is a yeah. business financial transaction. Don't forget that. It's a business transaction. It's not a football transaction. It's not a the, the, this is what I was trying to get at as well. Look, like, it, just look at Bloomberg and look at Reuters, who basically are them kind of publications that will actually reveal it. Not anything else. You, I mean, not Ben Jacobs or you got your own, you know, Fabrizio or anyone yeah. else. But do you know Look. what, Dawaki? Do you know what, Dawaki, yeah. right? Go Here's on. the thing. Here's the thing, right? Don't believe it. No, I know. Just forget I know. it. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The people forget it. It's not yeah. going to happen. If you believe it's not going to happen, yeah. fair play, man. If that's the piece you need, fair play. Don't mm. believe it, man. Mm. No one's holding a gun to you. Has no, believe what I'm saying. Believe what I'm saying. I don't mm. care. Just chill. It's going to happen. Whether you want to believe that, whether you don't want to believe that, up to you. It, Knock yourself out. You know right? what it is? Just... You know what's funny, though? <laughs> they've, they've, they've gone from Surgeon Radcliffe taking over to now saying, oh, Katana not buying or whatever, to now saying the glitter stain, which is okay. So, what, what happened with Sergeant Radcliffe? Where's this little cup of tea gone? I mean, this yeah, is the people, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very valid point. So, for yeah. those that are believing, your sports journalists, the sports journalists that you guys <laughs> hold in such high esteem about business matters, right? Mm. Why are you not holding a gun to the head when they were saying that is Sir James, Sir James, Sir James? That's gone quiet. Why are you going yeah. bloody DM them mm-hmm. lot, man, and ask them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's always the case. They always mention Qatar, don't they? That Qatar no longer can afford you, or they don't know the, the Qatar stuff. It's never a, they are not buying it, they're out, that's it, it's gone. I it's find it stuff. quite laughable that so um, these journalists think that Qatar can't afford something like Man United. But one thing I will say as well is, you know the Ben Jacobs quotes that came out earlier this week? He ben talked Jacob. about a rift be- or some sort of disagreement or some happening within the Altani family. Now, Riz, I believe you also mentioned this again yeah. on episode three. So, look, we're not ITKs. We're not any of that. And like you just said, Riz, if you want to believe us, believe us. If you don't want to believe us, we're not sat here with a gun to your head. We're not claiming to be something we're not. It's just a piece of information. It's a world yep. of free will. Do with it whatever you want. Do you know what? But don't just, just, come just... at us and give us hate for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? You know, like, that's uncalled for. I think some people, seriously, like the COVID vaccines had something in it. Because the whole the whole world is fucked. I'm being <laughs> frankly honest with you. Just use your yeah. fucking mind, man. Think. You know, you know what it is, Riz. I, I can't, I can't even. Have, what's the word? I feel sorry for these people as well mm. because they just don't know what they don't know. They only know their little bubble. They can't think outside. They, you know, as bad as it sounds, you know, I think, I think all of us here, you know. We, we, we're quite privileged, I suppose, you know, in a way that we interact them in more economic universes, you know, beyond football. Yeah. And we kind of get the scope. We kind of know the world out there and the way things happen. And it's not because we're reading about it. It's because we, we, we're going through it as well. Um, you know, and these people don't. And I, and I think those are the people who are the loudest, who have the least knowledge will be the loudest because they, they're just hiding their lack of knowledge, basically, you know. Um, yeah. So, so I do feel sorry for. Him. And by the way, um, Riz had always said, I think again in episode three, it wasn't so much a rift between um, the family. It, it was just obviously an opinion of which way you should be going. I think yeah. um, Shay Jasim, you tell it, Riz. I think it was Shay Jasim wanted to say, but HP didn't. Yeah. What I did was Jasim was ready to announce. He waited to announce it then that the deal's done, subject to ABC being completed. The dad said no. Not until the subject ABC have been completed. That was it. Just a disagreement, um, a friendly disagreement. And yeah, obviously, we... what the dad's saying, because let's be frank, the dad's the one that's bankrolling it. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. his dad, it's his dad that's bankrolling it. I mean, I'm just saying facts. So he's going to yeah, believe yeah. what he says. 
Uh, and look, uh, it looks like it's um, HBJ. He's won that day, as he has a, a many a time, no doubt, in the past as well. Now, boys, yeah. um, obviously, just quickly moving on, just before we wrap up this weekend's game, we've got a big game against um, Tottenham. Uh, yeah. Last year, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, we never won against any of the so-called top six. Um, when I say it's top six... We beat Spurs at Old Trafford. It's probably our best game of the season. That was so away, away from home. Spurs. Sorry, away, away from, from home. home. Yeah. yeah, away from yeah. home. So we've got Spurs away this weekend. First and foremost, uh, I don't know which way you want to do it. Do we want to do predictions? Or do we want to put what team will be played? Four one. Let's Man do United. predictions. Predictions. Four one. Four, Man one. United. We'll go one nil down and we'll win four one. Like the early season, yeah, go one nil down and then come back <laughs> and win the game. <laughs> yeah, need Maguire for that. <laughs> Don't forget, Ted did say we need Harry Maguire for away games. So uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, you know what? I, what website? What what website is he ordering his uh, hemp oil from? <laughs> <laughs> that guy, just natural man, high off life. Um, Aki, have some uh, predictions. I'll go with two one, two one United. I think it'll be a close game because I, I I watched Tottenham uh, the the first week. They were quite alright, you know, um, the way they were playing and everything. On on turn of Romero got subbed off. They flopped a bit, but I think he starts uh, this game tomorrow. But I'm going with a two-one win. Two-one for you, Abso. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna back Aki there. I'm, I think two-one. I think Spurs played very well in the first game. Obviously, we didn't. Our levels have got to drastically improve, but I, yeah, we've got enough to beat them. And look, they've got no Harry Kane anymore, man. Yeah, so I, I'm going to go a bit similar to Riz 3 1. I don't think we will be as bad. Um, you know, yes, we weren't great. Obviously, we weren't, we were bad, let's put it to our standards, but we did enough against Wolves because I think Wolves are very underrated. You know, um, I think people will be surprised with what Wolves do. Again, we did have the. Uh, play against new manager bounce once again as we always seem to do as well um before i take the 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 rest of the weekend's um, prediction from you boys as well for the for the other games a quick rundown on the team who do we think starting in goal Wanana. Wanana. right back one bissaka for me yeah Same. Yeah. yeah yeah okay right center back Varan. Varan. left center back Martinez. Martinez. Hopefully he's back, Leech. I think he started training, didn't he? Yeah, so he's, he's he yeah, travelled with them today. That's superb. Um, left back? Luke Shaw. Shaw. Sure. Yep, everybody's with, with that. How are we playing the midfield? Are we doing a two? Are we doing a one? And then a two eights? I think Casemiro, Mal, and Bruno. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, 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 I think he sticks with See, that. See, I, I wouldn't play Mount. I'd put Ericsson back it or Scott. Mm. I, th- I think McTominay, just because we need a bit of steel. We need a bit of physicality. I think he I, plays Mount, just to see how it goes. But then I think McTominay will come on, not Ericsson. I think he starts with those three. He starts with yeah. Mount, Bruno and Casemiro. Yeah, I, I have to agree. And boys, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have enough time. Otherwise, I would have picked you up on the Mount stuff that you talked about last um, last podcast. Um, for me, Mount Man, he, he's a good player. There's a reason why Arsenal, Liverpool wanted him, and why Chelsea were desperate to keep him. But let's keep it moving. Um, okay, right wing, Anthony, 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 Anthony as well. Luckily, Ted isn't here because he wanted Bruno on the right and wanted to drop Anthony altogether. He said he was poor against Wolves. I can see ourselves shaking his head there. Yeah, not a surprise. No comment. Um, okay, I'm going to put this in tandem, um, left wing and up top because I think that they kind of um, Rashford, depend on each other. Rashford, left wing, up front, Ras- um, what's it called? Uh, Sancho, yeah, I agree, yeah, yeah, about that, yeah, I'm always the same with that. Well, I'm going him, 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 him and Rashford were interchange. 100%. I, I like I said, Garnacho is a very good player, but he's just not ready to start. Um, Okay, we could. Uh, we've got a game tonight, um, which is on a Friday, where we, we're recording this. Forest for Sheffield United. Forest 2 1. I'm going Forest as well. Yeah, yeah. Forest 2 yeah. 1. Yeah. yeah. Saturday fixtures then. Fulham at home against Brentford. Oh, I'll go for a 2 2. 
a very good game. That's going to be a very good game. I personally am going to go for either 2 1 or 3 on Brentford. Okay. I know they're missing Tony, but I, I think Brentford are good, man. Is I, Mitrovic I, still part of the Fulham squad? Or is he still in the middle of his like kicking off phase? No, I think he's going to get sold soon. I don't, I don't know. But he's, he's still in the mat. He's still around the senior squad as far as we know, right? Uh, I'd assume so. I'm just. Okay, so. No idea, yeah. In that case, I'm going 2 1 Fulham. 2 1 Fulham in the prize of that he's still in the squad. Yeah. Yeah, because he did come on uh, against Everton. I'm yeah, saying 2 2. 2-2 two, two on that one. Yeah, I was going to say 2-2 two, two as well, draw. Yeah, I'm going with Brentford win. Liverpool at home would be Bournemouth. I'd want to say Bournemouth, but Liverpool going to win that easy. Yeah, 3-0. No. Yeah, 3-0. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go draw Bournemouth then. Chinese <laughs> um, Luton at home with Burnley, but that's been postponed because Luton haven't quite got their ground Can ready. Can we just briefly touch on that? Because yeah, I find that absolute bollocks. Like, yes, I get that the ground has to be a certain standard for the Premier League, but this is football. Like, I don't care if the journalists or the TV crew or the players have to feel uncomfortable for one day. Suck it up, get on with it, play football. Yeah, I'm with you on that, hundred percent. It's ridiculous. Yeah, shouldn't we get shouldn't get postponed? Um, okay, uh, so yeah, obviously we have to wait for that um, game to be played. Um, the next game is Wolves v Brighton. Wolves at home against Brighton or Albion. Brighton. 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 Sorry, I lost you. Who's the game? Wolves, Wolves at home against Brighton. 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 Three, Brighton. I'm going to go Wolves, you know. I'm going to go Wolves at home. And like I said, I don't think they're a bad team. I think that people are just sleeping on them. I think against us, they showed how good they are. But let's see. I don't think they're a bad... I, I agree with you, um, Harps. I don't think they're a bad team. I just think they can't score to save their life. So they that might is have a good performance. So I just think that Brighton's a bit more clinical. So that's why I'd say 3-1 Brighton for me. Yeah, I have to agree with that, though. But yeah, I'm just going to go with Wolves. Uh, the next fixture of five, half five is our game against Tottenham, which we've already discussed. Then the final game on the Saturday, eight o'clock, m- the Oil Clasico, Manchester City at home against Newcastle United. You know that'd be a good game, you know. Brilliant game, I think. Yeah, I th- I'm going to go Newcastle two one lads. Oh. I, I, I'm i agreeing with Rizzi. I don't know the what? score, so I'm not going to say score, but I'm going to say Newcastle, you know. Yeah, I know what I've got to win. New, Newcastle to win. Newcastle, Newcastle to win. I'll tell you why I say that, right? Because um, we used to under Fergie back in the day, and it's the right way to be, but City start the season slow. They always get their defeat or a couple of defeats in in the first quarter of the season and um, very early on. So I think it's an ideal time for Newcastle to be going there. And Newcastle are firing. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Newcastle are basically at that level now where they, they've got a lot of confidence behind them. Yeah, no, I, I have to agree with that. Um, okay, so then Sunday fixtures, we've got Villa at home against Everton. Aston Villa, 1-2-1. One, 2-0. Two, one. Two, nil. Two, two nil. yeah, yeah. Everton are just one of those teams that just should. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry if there's any Everton fans listening. I just think you're a pointless team that makes up the numbers. <laughs> the oh. No, he doesn't want to give us a prediction. Okay. Next oh, one. No, I said 2 West... no. I said 2 no, Villa. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. That's my bad. I didn't hear that. My apologies. Um, I, I, I'm going to go with Vitter as well. West Ham v at home against Chelsea, the half or click off. I'll West go with two, two. Home, are they? West Ham at home, yeah. I'll go with 2-2. Two, two. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Chelsea win. I'm going to go West Ham. Draw. Actually, 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 I'll change Chelsea. that. Sorry, West Ham, Chelsea, draw. Yeah, my 2-2. Two, two, I'll yeah, one nil West Ham. When uh, West Ham. Brilliant. And then the final game of the fixtures of the Premier League fixtures is on Monday. We eight o'clock kickoff with Crystal Palace at home v Arsenal. I'm gonna go with Crystal Palace. I think Arsenal one 0 
Yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal, three 0 That's a big Palace. margin. That's a big margin. I think one 0 oh. to Arsenal. I don't, I don't think they're that, that, that great, you know. Um, okay, guys, I think um, yeah, let, let's wrap it up there. I think um, it's been another great one, um, Riz. Thanking you very much. Like says, uh, it, it's been great um, to have you, but. You know what? Just before we just before we go again, the other thing that I mentioned on the podcast, boys, um, when you was on with Hannah, um, I just want to quickly mention what Riz just said there as well. Riz, what's your opinion on the way we started? Because I said in pre-season we looked undercooked, cooked, yeah, and I think there was a reason for that. What's your thoughts? I, th- I think I think I don't think we're fully match fit yet. I don't think we had a great pre-season in terms of the organisation of it. I think there's way too many games. Um, and I think, look, the fact that we got three points... Fergie, Fergie's words, a sign of a great team, a sign of a championship-winning potential team is one that can play so bad and still grind out a win. And that's what we did last season. Last, last, uh, first game. Yeah. So for me... Things can only get better with performances. I think we play shitter than we did. We were really bad, right? Um, and I think as players start to come back in, for example, Mainu and uh, Hojland, I think Hojland is going to be going to change the way we play the games completely. Once those guys are back, I think we'll get stronger, and stronger, and stronger. Yeah, I agree. I, like I said, last season he played predominantly in his preseason. His strongest team played ninety minutes. I think a lot of the games towards the end, and then we had okay. The first two games were shambles, but then after that we went on a great run. And then towards the end of the season we were just literally running on fumes, not even on you know any type of uh, fuel. We we're just literally running on fuels fumes. This year I think he's changed it. He's not played. I think the, only the players played. I think one game maybe. A couple of players play two games, 90 minutes. I think it's purposely um, bedding them in. So, at this time, the end of the season, we will be running on fuel and not fumes. And I think that's what has changed. So, he's done it up polar opposite side this time round. And I think then, you know, he'll find out how that works. But I agree with you, Reese. I think he's purposely undercooked them to get a great season towards the end. So, I think people just lay off the team. Let's just see, give them a few games. Let's get to at least October, November. Let's get all our players in. Let's see how we play and then just lose your shit, especially once Mason Greenwood is in the, in the squad as well. Just, like I said, just last point, though, just God. on that. The, I know I said 4-1 Spurs. I, don't, I think our performance will be better than Wolves, yeah, but I think Spurs will probably be the better team in big parts of the game. I feel that away... We will counter attack them very well. And I think that's something mm-hmm. they can't deal with. And that's where I think the score line's coming from rather than the performance for the Spurs game. Yeah, and I and I think the a little bit different to that, Lee, I think our performance will be decent because of that reason, because we were away, so we might have to soak up the pressure a little more and counter attack them. Um whereas yeah. now, like you said, um, Spurs haven't got that striker like Kane used to knit them. So it will be quite interesting to see how they play, because it's gonna be their first game now, uh, without Kane. And I think all preseason he's been the goal. He's been scoring most of their goals, so it'll be really interesting to see. I think it's a good time to play them, I suppose, if nothing else. Mm. Boys, again, um, been fantastic. Thank you, Riz. Really appreciate you coming on. Obviously, I'm saying this as though you're, you're a guest, which you're not. Um, obviously, yeah. I know you've been busy. You know, you've got things going on there as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, hopefully. Back. Yeah, hopefully again, you know, we, we, we'll do another uh, podcast in terms of the results after the, the Spurs game as well. So again, everybody, uh, thank you all. Um, again, don't forget to subscribe on all our channels, um, share and like the content as well. And we will be having a lot more things coming up as well. So again, thank you for listening and stay ahead on me.